Hey guys, it's Shade. Today I have a review of the White Knight's watercolor for you guys. I know that this is a pretty popular paint and I wanted to try it out. I actually filmed this a pretty long time ago. So I'm doing a primary triad. I have Matter Lake PR187, Hansa Yellow PY1, and Ultramarine Blue PB29. The colors are only available in whole pans, which is really interesting. They have no half pans. They are made in Russia. They are available in both sets and open stock. They recently released some new colors and that brought the total of the colors to 64. And of those 64, according to them, 48 of them have the highest fastness. So that is more than half. I have heard about some people having sand or something like sand in their paints when they open them. I didn't have that problem. They were just quite sticky and you can kind of see them sticking on the wrappers. But otherwise the pans are perfectly fine. Not totally smooth or perfect, but they have a pretty healthy gloss. The paints have pretty high vibrancy. Which is really nice considering how inexpensive they are and for a full whole pan. They re-wet nicely and they paint well. The ultramarine has a nice granulation, but I did notice that the colors don't disperse as much as I would have expected them to. In terms of mixing a color wheel, you can see that this is a really nice, bright, vibrant color wheel. You got the whole spectrum. I also did paint to the side just a mixture of the colors and I noticed that those when you just mix the three together they don't mix as cleanly as something like a Schmincke or even a Van Gogh or a Lucas with the similar colors. To test them out I decided to paint a pair of plums and that went really well. I did not really have any problems with using it wet and wet. The colors layered really nicely. They weren't chalky, they weren't gummy. They moved fine on the paper. I will say that the colors are quite staining, even the ultramarine, which is a little weird. I'm not used to ultramarine being a staining color, but that wasn't a really a big deal. They weren't super duper staining or anything like that. They worked well with the Mexican fluid. So really, I don't have any complaints, but somehow I don't really feel like these paints are amazing. Like I would say that they are somewhere in between student grade watercolors and artist grade watercolors. 
there's just some little extra oomph that's missing. Since they're really one of the cheapest watercolors around, there's been several times where I have gone to the art store to buy a color and I saw that it was available in the White Nights and I got that pan. And then after bringing it home and painting with it, I was just so disenchanted that I just went back and bought a half pan of Schwinko or something else instead and was much happier. Especially with the earth colors. I'm really disappointed in the earth colors. I feel to me anyway that they're not really vibrant and they feel kind of dead. I'm not a big fan. I'd much prefer working with old Holland's earth colors or something like that. So there's just something about these paints that just does not feel the same as the artist grade paints that I'm accustomed to working with. That being said, I for sure would suggest this for beginners or even intermediate, basically anybody, because there's nothing wrong with these paints. These are good paints. There's just something about them that even when I want to like them, I just really can't bring myself to use them very often. They just feel really lackluster. That being said, I do really like the shine that I managed to get with them on the full plum to the right. I feel like it looks really luminous and I was definitely able to get a depth of color with no issue. I think I also used a bit of lifting and that worked really nicely. Like I said, I don't actually have any complaints about this paint. It's just something that stops it from feeling like it belongs in artist grade category. Do you guys know what I'm talking about?
Also, this line tends to use some strange versions of colors. For example, the color that I have is Hansel Yellow, which is normally PY3. They're using PY1, which is a really nice, bright, vibrant yellow for sure, but it is marginally light fast. So I would not use this in my paintings that I would sell. They also use this color PR187 for their Matter Red Lake, which is a bit more of an uncommon color, not a totally unused color. They rate it as highest light fastness. Generally, ASTM rates it as a 2 instead of a 1, which would be the highest light fastness. So sometimes I also kind of question what their rating of light fastness is. That being said, the majority of the colors use normal pigments with normal light fastness ratings. There are a couple others, including I think a green that they have, which is not available in any other line and it is quite fugitive, but I have heard that it is a really pretty color. So that also depends on whether that sort of thing bothers you or not.
really don't think these are amazing pants, but they're, I guess you can say, amazing for the price. This is for sure an amazing price to quality ratio. That is some good stuff. So if you're on a budget and you need some paints, this is a really nice quality for the amount of money that you would spend. Because when you're really looking to get higher than this, the price goes up a ton. So that was really it, a really simple, quick review of White Knight watercolors. Please guys, let me know. So let me know what you guys think of these paints. Have you tried them before? Do you like them? Do you not like them? I feel like there is a lot of hype around these paints. Do you get the hype? Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you once again to my patrons who are the bestest. Stay cool out there. It is a hot, hot summer. Talk to you guys next time. Bye.